Okay, um, so today I'm going to be taking a look at a lot of portraits, and um, I'm going to start with this one and move into some other stuff. For my school, I have to do a presentation on how my art's been going. Um, would it be okay if I talked about your lessons in community? Of course, of course, of course it is. <coughs> I know, I'm so sorry if my voice starts to break. I, I, you guys seem, because you guys are at the end of the day for me, and it's my last class, and usually by then my voice is just gone. I don't know when my voice will get fixed. I really don't know if it's, uh, like, uh, I, I really don't know why my voice has been so weak. It's usually, like, never this bad. <clears throat> it probably just has to do with fatigue. Okay, um, so I wanted to start off with, everyone pay attention, make sure you guys are focused on the class, you write stuff back to me. Um, I wanted to focus on uh, this piece here first. Uh, so it seems like you were going for a hooded eye. Um, so you have a crease, but not really. Let's take, it what, to take a look at what hooded eyes actually do um, on a portrait. <clears throat> so facial features. Uh, eyes and then top eyelid we just completely get rid of that and I'm not sure why there's still some line stuff left over um, so this update happened in two parts um, the first parts already been out and I only did this because it's so that you guys don't have to wait any longer for the new model and stuff but we are still ironing some stuff out and also, the body isn't fully riggable yet, the figure isn't fully poseable, but that's coming up within the week. Uh, so for those who have been asking about weird little bugs, it just comes with it, this is part of it. Um, just, uh, this is how we kind of get around um, making sure you guys don't have to wait too long and uh, being able to still work on it. It's just dividing it into two parts. Um, so Asian eyes typically do this. They catch the light um, in this really... See, yeah, I really don't like the lighting setup. They catch the light in this um, hooded way, like this, this kind of like mini hill. Just like that. Do you guys see that? How there's not really a crease going. That's just the slightest little indication. I think that's for the blend shapes. But, which is basically making it blink and stuff. By the way, the expressions and neck rigs are coming back. They're not permanently gone. Again, this is, was a rushed update, and we did it in two parts. So you can see how... We don't, have, we don't have a line anymore around the eye, we just have this little hill. And if I bring that top lid down, see how that crease is back? And you can see it on all sides. So a, a hooded eye is, that, is an eye without the crease, is an eye that has this uh, edge to it. And um, it's an edge that is caused by a paper fold, remember how there's two kinds of edges. <clears throat> so for you, not only are you using a really, really strong black and white which I'll take care of first, actually. You don't need all this black on the side of the face. She's pale, but you made the sides of her face seem completely dark, even though, yeah, that's the shading. That's not an excuse. I mean, she isn't painted only on the sides of her face, so there should be no reason why the shadows get that dark. Something that is allowed to be dark, see how what happens when I get rid of that neck shadow? Something that is allowed to be dark is the just the pocket of the neck and the chin. And I'm just going to get that back by just deleting away until uh, the chin is back. I'm going to have to just see how like it's, it's not good to even have the chin that dark because what happens is it's going to look like a little goatee. It's just such an unusual little shadow to have here. But I'm doing this so that we can have that distinction and that crease similar to the eye crease around the uh, neck and chin pocket. Alright, so we're taking care of that first. A really important edge, one object in front of the other. That means that we have an edge, a really strong one, a pocket. This looks messy until you clean it up. I love darken and lighten layer modes. I use them all the time now. So try to get used to using them as well. It really helps you not have to affect your work too much. And then um, 
I'm just going to gradually taper. Um, oh, I see what I did. I deleted it in the wrong direction. <laughs> Um, no, 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 I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, so we get to do this. We get to do this. And then we get to, um, no, no, this is this, I can salvage this. So we get to do this. See this right here? And then we go back to before I started deleting. We paint, paste in place, and then we select it all, and then we delete this. And then we do this. Okay. I I did I did do I did do it in the wrong way though. Sorry, I'm I'm on a lot of day quill right now. Okay, so I'm just allowing this little shadow to sit under the chin, not around it. I'm not looking at the comments, please, please, please don't ask questions now. Just focus on the class, write your notes. And the comments will follow. So now that we took care of that, we got rid of that weird like goatee outline type deal. Um, we're starting to see a little bit more of a believable light environment. I'm going to lighten the background just a little bit more. And that's for the sake of all of the white that's visible on your painting. That's, be that's visible because the light source can reach it. And why can the light source only reach that object and not, you know, the, the face and not reach the background? That makes no sense. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to even out all of these mid-tones, so I'm going to just lighten some of them so we have more mid-tone than shadow. Even the sides of the face are mid-tones. Write that back to me. So the sides of the face being mid-tones means that, you know, just like the sides of the cube would be mid-tone and the bottom of the shape would be the shadow. So the sides of the face are not shadows, they're mid-tones. Write that back to me, please. <clears throat> All right, I'm just going to put this user in timeout because there's no reason why you should be talking about that right now. And if this person talks again, mods, you know what to do. All right, so the hooded eye. Um, what you did here was you kind of tried to meet it both halfway. And if you're going to go for the hooded eye, which seems like you are going for that, seeing how you outline the face, or the eyes, sorry, the hooded eye is just this, instead of a crease that goes inside at the line of the crease, where the line of the crease usually starts, that's where we have that hooded eye. Even if you didn't mean for a hooded eye, it's a good chance for me to teach for a hooded eye, but I think you did go for that. I didn't read your description. So it was a little late today, so I want to make sure I get into the class. We're going to start with a mid-tone, a basic mid-tone for the whole hood of the eye. No shading, nothing yet, just one mid-tone. And the key thing for this is that you don't include the um, the crease. Just one solid mid-tone all around. An Asian eye is hooded both at the top lid and the bottom lid. It's not just a top lid hood. That's more of a Caucasian hood where some people have hooded eyes and but they're not Asian. So I'm just blocking in. Next thing I'm going to block is this I kind of want to do it in soft brush, but I've been favoring the more painterly uh, product after the paint overs. So I'm blocking in radially though. I'm using a bit too much contrast, but just so you guys can see it. Okay. And then I'm carrying that over there. The tricky part of a hooded eye is really in remembering that you need to make sure you have no crease, but also in making the face or making the shape of the of the hood feel like an, it's an actual um, part of the eye socket. That's the trickiest part, making sure everything fits in together. Right, and we do that by radially shading using one of these mid-tones here. What happens, can anyone answer? What happened, um, what happens when we use a grayscale, a, a dark value instead of a mid-tone? What happens when we start using shadows instead of, instead of mid-tones? Can anyone answer that? What does that mean to overuse, overuse shadows and neglect the mid-tone <clears throat> when you have more of one than the other? All right, so I'm just 
radially building up only the top so you see half the hood becomes shadowed. Not all eyes are this hooded but this is a good extreme for us to study. The lower part over here. I'm also going to get rid of a lot of this outline you have which is really really I'm so sorry my voice is gone. Um, <clears throat> I'm just getting rid of a lot of this over here. You were using too much, and this exactly is what I just asked the students, which I'll get an answer for. Uh, contrast dependence, excellent, what else? It doesn't translate well into color, beautiful, what else? Um, uh, too much contrast, if you transfer into color it looks muddy, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, <clears throat> But what areas of the face stay in mid-tone? That's a big question. Maybe someone will answer it in the lesson, I mean, in, in the audience. But this lesson is mostly focused on hooded eyes right now. But I do have lots and lots and lots of videos um, about 14-day challenge, especially, that cover that. So I'm getting all rid of all of these excessive outlines here because we lost the shape of the iris. We lost the white of the eye into this extremely, extremely line-dependent eye painting. We don't even have the distinction for the inner flesh of the eye over here. We're just missing a lot of stuff because you use too much black. And that's why Portrait Studio is in the solid gray because we don't want to encourage that. Oh my gosh, what just happened? Is that Portrait Studio coming up? I don't know what, do you guys see that? That was weird. That was like Time stood still or something. That was that was really weird. Um, so I'm going to shrink the eye a little bit using high density brush. All right, I'm going to widen the nose just a touch. The reason why the eyes look slanted is because of the way the hood falls on the eyeball, but the eyeball is still circular. I'm so sorry about my voice. I should, probably should have skipped class today. <clears throat> I just don't like skipping classes. I don't like skipping the public class. We only have two. So the eyes are too big, very cartoony, very unrealistic, and we've pretty much brought everything down. Now that we can safely bring in the black, everything will kind of look a little bit more intact. Oh, you guys didn't see that? Only I saw that? That was weird. Okay. So I'm bringing in the lash line first. That's just because the hood is so strong. I want to know where the outline of the eye is. The lash line is pretty much the only place you're allowed to outline. And because you are allowed to do that there, students saw that as a license to outline everywhere. You, you used way too much black around the eyes. Next step would be the pupils, and then right after that, we just get a bunch of shadows. So there's no none. There's none of this after that. These are the only two areas in the eye area that you're allowed to have this much black in. The rest are all different, like you know, elevations of that black. Black right here, the lash line. Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to not die over here. Okay, and then continuing that lash line, making sure I have a water line still. I need to get all rid of all this white, this unusual white spike you have everywhere. You only need some 
two big things. I gotta get rid of this edge as well. Two big things. Make sure you're missing a crease for the hooded eye. Just take it easy with your with your black and white. You're outlining too much. Okay, so you don't need much to make it look Asian. And then <clears throat> darken all of this excessive highlight just around here. I, and I want to take this opportunity to just apologize for my constantly sick voice or my sniffles or my coughs. Um, people have mentioned that it bothers them. And I can't do anything about it. My hands are tied. Um, my entire life now is just managing this unusual temperature problem and all this crappy thyroid stuff. And I am sorry if it's made it very difficult to pay attention or if you're just the kind of person that cannot handle the sound of someone sniffling or, or the monotone that happens when, I'm, when I have a cold. I just have a perma-cold. But I'm still here, and I'm still trying to make sure everyone gets their time and keep this community running. Alright, so I'm just going to darken the lower eyelid now. We have space for every part, for every component. We're not using too much black. This excessive dependency on contrast is gone. And really, like, I know everybody loves blue eyes. I just want to take this chance here to talk about this as well. I, I know everybody loves blue eyes, but it's, there's just something so beautiful about a brown eye. Give brown eyes a chance, okay? Make America great again. <laughs> give, give brown eyes a chance. I'm making this. <clears throat> You've been sick? Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. You never have noticed? I don't know. If you look at some of my old videos, my voice sounds much better. So this is nice. Okay, we get it. Everyone has really, like, this love for blue eyes. But give those brown eyes a chance. They really have, like, a lot of beauty to them. Especially if you're painting an Asian eye. It's not a very common thing to do in this stupid like recent pop movement toward looking American and I don't really understand that I think that, that the Asian look is so beautiful even that the lighter skinned uh, bluer eyed um, eight of those those uh, provinces in Asia I don't know what they're called territories they do have some Asian faces that have some blue to them but they're so unique they're mostly hazel with really ashy browns, definitely nothing like Caucasian or or what you would call white. So just try to take a moment to you know express the beauty of a culture, just outside of any we call it Americanization. Give it a second. Of course, there's beauty in blonde hair and blue eyes, but um, you know don't over stylize your stereo. It shows a maturity in your portfolio when you don't give glowing Sephiroth eyes to everything. And you just let the culture come through. It looks a lot more mature, a lot more put together. I'm going to darken the white of the eyes. is a little bit too strong. So remember that it's very, very hooded, so that means we have a little bit less white visible. Just like that. So even when you do want to lighten the eye of a culture that usually comes in darker, um, you want to just go for hazels. You don't want to go for the super icy, icy eye look unless you're, you know, you, you're doing something with it, unless it's some sort of possessed or blind seer. That's really what you want to reserve that for. If, if, it, if a protagonist has big icy eyes, you're not creating a relationship between the protagonist and the viewer. You're actually, in fact, distancing. So the colder the eye, the less relatable the character is. So she's a lot more relatable now because we just didn't give her that unnatural icy eye. And even whiter skin or Caucasian faces don't have an eye that is pure white or icy. It's a very specific character trope you're pulling from right now and you most likely don't want to do that for your 14 day challenge. Choose something that's a little bit more natural, a little bit more common, a little bit more mature. 
And to be honest, you're making a lot of immature choices with your skill right um, with your painting right now. Your skill is dependent on contrast, excessive outlining, over over dependency on this shine, and probably using dodge tool. None of that is mature. And I've said before, you know, how you do how you deal with dodge tool is, is a sign of maturity. <clears throat> The eyes are a little asymmetrical. I'm going to bring that down one second. <laughs> you probably heard some of that cough. I'm so sorry. This stupid Yeti mic doesn't, doesn't mute right away. <gasps> you probably heard that. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. So as for everything else, let's start to bring in some highlights. We're just trying to use the same kind of highlight that we see in Porta Studio here. And for those who don't know what Porta Studio is, it's a software that is designed to generate references for you using models. But yeah, about the price, I think I'm going to keep it at this price for a while. It seems like a fair price for everyone's, you know, budget and the majority of my students, I see that the majority of them is between 16 to like 27 and you know between that age you just don't have money you're in between school or dealing and depending on your parents wallet and I don't want to have to put you guys in that position so I adjusted the price to be a little bit more accessible at the end of the day this is about the community it's not so much about a payout all right I'm going to add in that shadow here on the side it took a lot of thinking well, maybe not that much thinking. <laughs> I'm not Scrooge. I don't need three ghosts to tell me to take it easy with my prices. Fuck that. I should be asking for $300. <laughs> considering how much an Asaro head costs, considering how much a figure costs on Amazon, I should be asking for that much. I don't know. I wouldn't do that to you guys. Maybe if I hit big, you know, I get a million subscribers, I'm just like... Oh yeah, Porsche Studio is three hundred dollars now. <laughs> All right, so I gave that nose some consistent shadow geometry, and then I'm gonna bring in the bridge. There is no edge here. You blend this; it slides. The forehead slides into the nose. Write that back to me. It's all one system. Asian eyes also tend to not have such a strong eyebrow arc. They tend to have much more flat eyebrows. Just like that. Very, very flat and thick. Not bushy, but just thick, but sparse. A little bit more flat, just like that. And that's why we want to, like this, this is how you kind of wrap your head around referencing for 14-day for, for challenge. You don't really copy a specific face, but you kind of work from the race that that face comes from. Do you see what I mean? That's why I don't want to give everyone a complete... Um, okay, you can use referencing for Portrait Studio. It's too much of a green light for students to go crazy and start copying photorealism for 14 day challenges. The challenge is supposed to help you draw a face eventually without the need for reference. Yes, the forehead slides into the nose, my, my minions. <laughs> okay, and then the sides of the nose are getting to be a little bit, Asian noses tend to be shorter bridge wise giving this shadow of the nose a little bit more calm of a uh, value and then <clears throat> the septum here is lower than usually Asian noses have the septum balanced with the uh, with the nostrils you see around the lips you're also using too much contrast um, but it's a step above where we had it before. Way too much contrast, way too much strength everywhere with the black and the white. The eyes look like anime eyes, and you'll see in a second what I mean. Also, the jawline seems to just camouflage with the neckline. That's not good. Don't hide any anatomy. Even if it's a girl, she has a jaw. She can talk. Care to listen. <laughs> okay. Need a joint. There's a joint. There's so little joints on the face. It's the only joint on the head, so show it off. <clears throat> um, so I'm gonna try to take a look at everyone's work today 
because I have a feeling that this winter, this coming winter, is going to really knock me out. It's going to say knock me up. <laughs> and I might get sick a lot, so I might end up canceling classes. So I'm going to try to do as much as I can before I take my winter break. I always get the most sick during the winter. Your guess is why. All right, a little jaw here. Things are starting to look a little better. And we need some last minute little shines. Oh, okay, I need to do one more little thing. I need to thicken the neck though. Show the jaw off and thicken the neck. Asian faces tend to have really strong jaw lines. Kind of more rounded. You can call it a rounded face, but I really see a square more than I see a rounded face. And this all comes from my work with um, makeup back when I used to do makeup and do people's faces and everyone would say, oh, I have such a round face. No, you have very strong jaw, so the contouring would try to like um, even that out a little bit. So it's usually a square <clears throat> for Asian faces, just like that, if you can tell. And then we'll take a look at the before and after and call it a day. Okay, so no crazy shadows outlining everywhere. Excessive white and black, super bright Sephiroth, Manga, Kingdom Hearts, Kyrie eyes, and really, really thick lash line that goes all the way into the white of the eye. So the white of the eye is gone, but the white of the eye is pure white to make up for the lack of white of the eye. And you got that little specular highlight in there like it's doing something. It's, it's, it's no longer the most important white in the eye. The specular highlight, the sparkle, should be the most important highlight, should be the brightest point. It's, the, it's a big lake. The eyeball is a big lake, and the white of the eye isn't what's white. It is the water on the white of the eye. Um, and then after, we have a little bit more subtlety in the size of the eye. She's still beautiful. Still an Asian face. We have a hood for both the upper and the lower eye. We don't have that manga face. You'd want to move away from that for the 14-day challenge. And we don't have crazy shadows on the side of her face like she's growing a beard. <clears throat> Keep that area safe because safe from shadow and excessive um, outlining because you're going to bring in hair one day and that hair is going to cast some shadows. Uh, so just take it easy with your shadows. Even here I haven't over exaggerated it. I'm still very safe and in my perspective when I paint this is probably half finished. This isn't finished. To a lot of you this looks finished. Um, this is a woman, by the way, for anyone asking. This, is, well, this would be a woman. Um, the, the jawline isn't massive. The eyebrows aren't low. Uh, the nose isn't wide. The nose and the mouth are very close to each other. The chin isn't low. The head isn't square. It's more spherical, even though we did bring in that cube shape. But here, very, very symbolic head silhouette. So the head, if you, if you, it's going to look like the top of a, of a bowling pin or whatever they're called. You know, if, if you were to, I don't know how to sketch that. <laughs> it's got its little thing. It, if I were to just blacken her out, it'll just look like we just took a picture of a really, really important bowling pin <laughs> and silhouette it out. Um, I want to be able to see a head just on the silhouette stage. So write that back to me. The silhouette should represent a head. Just at the silhouette level, we should see a head. Um, so if we're not seeing a head by then, then it's just... Uh, that we're not sure what we're seeing. This is your day two. You're still pretty early. I hope this uh, gets you, you know, catches you early in your mistakes. I've been trying to help those out who are doing their 14-day challenge. I'm trying to make time in the in the weekly meets to see if I can uh, critique as many 14-day challengers as possible. 14-day challenge's purpose is to help you uh, develop your portrait painting and portrait painting is important for your portfolio. Lots of P's. Um, and uh, if you don't know how to paint a face, your merit as an artist does significantly decrease commercially, period. As for your intel you know, intellectual or, I don't know, spiritual merit, that's not my business. But <laughs> I'm, I'm only concerned with what you are worth in the portfolio. And a portrait knowledge represents you as having more skill, period. Also, everything, name it, that happens on the face from translucency to color to, to, to texture to uh, shine to water to hair to every everything have symmetry beauty characterization 
gesture. It all happens on a face. Um, the face is just how we tell stories as artists. So if you don't know how to paint a face, get on it. All right, for this eye, uh, for this face, sorry, we start with this eye. Very, very asymmetrical. The eyebrows are way too strong for this tiny of face. Feels like you're painting like the face of like a young girl or something like that. <clears throat> I'm just going to clear my throat one second. Okay, my worst fear is one day not muting. <laughs> And I just do my noises and my coughs and my sneezes and my clearing of my throat and all live. And it's just my worst fear. I stare at that mic flash like my life depends on it. For this one, it looks like she's looking down. And that's for a very, very uh, specific reason. The white of the eye under her eyeball, under her iris and pupil, is not there. I need to zoom out. Sorry for those who can't see. Please just maximize my video if you can't see and you need to zoom up. Again, the silhouette, does it represent a head? It looks more like a, 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 a balloon. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm giving her a jawline. As soon as you put in the jawline, that's what interrupts that perfect sphere. And then we start having, you know, all this realism come back to us. Don't forget the jawline. Write that back. I've been having a lot of fun making you guys write stuff back to me. I haven't been doing much of it lately. Alright, I'm going to give the mouth some width, the nose some length, so she looks a little bit older than 12. I'm going to give that eyebrow arc some, some softness. I'm actually going to blend away a lot of this eyebrow. It's way too pencil thin, way too uh, old lady drawing her eyebrows back in. I mean, I say that so rudely, like, I just insulted, like, all the old ladies, including my mom. What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> you know how I was just like, even the young girls do it, okay? They erase their eyebrows and they just go and microblade them back on. Don't forget the jawline. Yes, yes, the claps in between, too. <clears throat> all right, and I'm trying to make the eyes crossed a little. So they look like they're looking in the same location. They still look like they're looking down, and that's only because there's no white under the um, the pupil and the iris. Okay, so before, after. I'm going to flip it. Flip it good. And then I'm just going to keep going. I might just cancel all my classes tomorrow until I get my voice back. Until I feel better. An early weekend. Play some league, scream, you know? Because that's what people do when they rest. <clears throat> when I play alone, I don't get raged. But when I play with people, because I have the mic access to them, <laughs> I like rage at them. Why would you do that? Why would you do this? So I think it's best if I don't um, play with people. Get a mini three-day vacation. Just evening the space of the eyes here. Lots and lots of liquify stuff. And whenever I'm spending too much time in liquify fixing your errors, that's because you didn't sketch. Sketch before you paint. Write that back to me. Always sketch before you paint. Yeah, sometimes it might have an accidental nice face, but how many times are you going to gamble like that? Sketch before you paint. Write that back to me. <laughs> um, no, they don't have to line up. Her mouth seems to be a little bit on the smaller side. Oh, is it raining? We were going to have a bonfire tonight. Oh, Can you still have a bonfire in the rain? Damn, that's really coming down. Do you guys hear that? Will the, will, will the fire still light up? Yeah, sketch before you paint. All right, and now I'm just going to connect all the temple together. So I don't know which of these, which day is this for your 14-day challenge. 
Exactly. Don't gamble. Sketch before you paint. I love you guys. And you see how the top of the head has the same shadows as the bottom? That's not good. Can barely hear the rain. <laughs> oh, that's my dryer. <laughs> Lots of sounds today. Right, so see how I'm just collecting all the shadows towards the lower half of the face? Okay, you guys have to be able to hear that rain right now, right? That's really loud. I love the rain. And then there's the shadow in between. Right along here. See that shadow? And that's because we have... Let me open up the studio. <clears throat> that's because we have the space in between the nose in between the eyebrows, that nose area, as an indentation. Okay, so see that? It goes inside. It doesn't just keep going. If it kept going and we had like no glabella at all. So let's see if I can... Uh, okay, depth, nose bridge, tip, bend. Oh, it's right here. Um, Glabella depth. Alright, if we had that. And then we had the nose bridge as. No, the nose bridge depth as all the way up. We have a little bit more of a, a strong Liam Neeson kind of nose sliding into the forehead and the forehead sliding into the nose. And then from front view, that looks like the missing shadow. But if we put everything back. To where it was, we have more shadow. That, that shadow disappears. The shadow goes in, out, in, out. Shadow, kind of catching the light. Alright, it's not a lot. You don't need a lot to represent it. But I hope these changes have helped you. They're not a lot. But technically for you, they're a lot. And I'm just going to do one more little shadow toward the lower half of the face. Just like that, just making sure that this is still a cylinder. I mean, a sphere, sorry. And it's still catching all the shadow towards the lower half of the face. You see, it's more of a sphere now. And if we bring in that highlight radially at the roof of the head, or like the top of the forehead, it'll look three-dimensional as well. A little bit of light for the chin. So a lot of symmetry issues that you have, very symbolic eyes, very asymmetrical. Please flip your canvas. The nose you drew is very cute. It's very, very well done. I don't know if you spent more time with noses than anything else, but you did a great job with the nose. I didn't have to change so much. Careful with the shadows on either side, though. <clears throat> okay, and then I think one more 14-day challenge. Oh, no. Oh, we're done. We're done with the 14-day challenges. This one... I don't know what you're going for. I really don't. But stop coloring now. Stop with the colors immediately. You have, you're doing nothing with your colors right now. All you're doing is really, really nice skin tone values. With just a red in the background. It kind of looks like you're trying to make a joke because the color is just so out there. Um, if you're Russian and you're like trying to show something a little bit more national, um, it really seems like you're representing the transvestite community of Russia than, um, than like a, just a universal model used to, you know, make Russia look beautiful kind of thing. Like a, like a, like a magazine proud to be Russian kind of thing. Um, so if you are going for, uh, something a little bit more proud to be Russian. I don't recommend using a face that has so many male signatures on it. The nose is broken. It looks like that one guy, you know that actor with that broken nose? It's huge. Uh, what's his name? He's like this blonde surfer dude. <clears throat> I forget his name, but this is his nose right here. You got to straighten that out. Make it like kind of reach the mouth a little bit more. If this is supposed to be a transvestite, or is the, if this is supposed to be like a drag queen, 
then you're going in the right direction. But women, their noses are close to their mouths compared to men. Compared to men. Compared to old people, everyone looks pretty. Again, why am I making fun of old people? <laughs> I'm not going to age well, am I? Karma's going to bite me in the ass. So I'm cleaning up that jawline. Just this alone will just make her look like a little bit of an older, like that um, media rep for Trump, that Cruella DeVille. What's her name? Marianne Conway. It just looks like her. She has a very feminine face, but she has a couple of old signatures here and there because of her age that, um, that kind of make her look a little bit more... Uh, masculine but she's definitely has her gender intact kind of thing and if you don't like it when someone talks about the difference between male and female the door is just that little x at the top of the window um, if you're out to make it so that men and women don't exist and just in between um, then uh, then I, I really don't know what to say to you there are differences hormonal differences between men and women and how is it that they deny the gender exists but then they choose a gender I, I really don't get it i don't get it um even if they're like in between two genders don't you have to like identify them first and then swim around in between anyway i'm raising this all the way up and i'm closing her face in because women have compared to men short faces compared to men is the key don't get on me compared to men women have shorter faces men's bone structure is maximize because of their testosterone levels so they got these crazy long faces these strong noses really really low eyebrows <clears throat> okay so let's take a look at the before and after and if you didn't believe me that she looked very very um a drag queen transvestite type deal after before it's just the long face and the strong jaw and the distance between the nose and the mouth. That's it. So if this was a Russian, proud to be Russian, I'm, I'm really happy to be Russian. Here's our cute little motto mascot thingy. Um, here's our flag and here's how our beautiful women look. Yes, women in Russia look very, very masculine, um, but they don't look like men wearing makeup. Um, Russian women have very strong, it's not masculine. They just have their own womanly way of being really, really, really pretty. But at the same time, they look like that one blonde um, tomboy leader from Atlantis. You know, that crazy cool lady who can drop kick. I don't know if you used a reference. I don't know if you even went for the transvestite thing. I don't know. But it seems like um, it wouldn't matter if you did uh, go for that because as a drawing, it reads as a male and... If you were going for that, good, but for the sake of the lesson, I really wouldn't, I mean, again, I don't understand. I chose this because uh, there's a fact, there's a, there's a possibility you didn't mean for it to be a male. And uh, that's a very big mistake in that, if, if that's the case. I'm getting rid of that white over here, cleaning up around the face, making sure the sides of the nose are not too dark. It's overrated, the size of the nose you just need. The highlight on the tip of the nose. All right, so things look a little bit more pretty now, a little bit more easy to access. And if you're complaining about the fact that it looks too polished, just look at those eyes. That's a lot of makeup. The polished boat has sailed way before I got here. I'm just making everything match. What kind of makeup, self-respecting makeup artist would avoid foundation? <clears throat> so, before, after, male, female. Mr. Brack, yeah, she is a drag queen. Um, that explains a lot. <laughs> that explains a whole deal. <clears throat> How did your history snapshot to a new layer? I don't know what you mean. I think you guys think that I'm doing some crazy stuff with my history. I'm just copy pasting the whole scene and going back. Um, yeah, the nose doesn't look very in perspective, but there is a slight three-quarter view. Also, I have a feeling that the transvestite that you are representing or, tra or drag queen um, doesn't actually have this much strength to their face, um, though it might be, though it just might be. 
Uh, but the makeup was a giveaway, as well as the distance between the nose and the mouth. Very, very masculine. And if you did go for it, um, you did a good job in making it look like a man uh, dressed as a woman. Uh, not to start shit or anything at all, but please didn't, but isn't transvestite the term for people with both genitals? No, that's hermaphrodite. Transvestite is someone who's changing into a woman. Transvestite. Uh, right? Uh, transgender. I don't know. It's the same thing, I think. Um, it's quite simple. Gender equals conceptualization of personality filter regarding the sex, like an attitude of sort. I'm not getting into that, and anybody who is can uh, skedaddle. All right, so there's that for today's lesson. Um, please, but the, outside of that whole um, transvestite, drag queen talk, masculine features talk, you, you're, you're throwing in a background, you're trying to paint illustrations, you're not ready for that. Your use of texture here is very, very misguided. You're using tiny little brushes to make the fur believable. You need to do some fur texture studies. You need to do some face texture studies. You need to do some hair studies. Forget about backgrounds. Forget about color. Perfect your edges. It's all the same mantra that we usually see. Transsexual man becoming a woman. Dress, transvestite dressed like a woman. Oh, okay. Thank you, Tom. Um, so this beautiful piece here has one thing bothering me in it. Um, and that's the amount of light available to the chin. It wouldn't be that available at all because that chin is between two light sources. The primary, which is relatively pretty weak, and the secondary, which is doing a lot of shine. So I darken the whole thing in a beard shadow. Don't worry. I'll bring it back. I'm going to lighten the edges, the tip of the nose, the farthest reaching tip of the nose. The nose outline wouldn't be all the way because it's is the is the light capturing the whole nose or is it just the tip of the nose that's sticking out far enough to capture some of that isn't the hair working like an umbrella to hide a great deal of that then i'm going to get my blocking brush blocking brush and just delete away but only at the elevations that do catch light and you'll see in a second how bright you made it. All right, so before, after. It was way too bright for this light environment. Um, you just exposed so much light to an area that really wouldn't be catching all that. All right, if she turned around, I feel like her hair would be a little bit more tugged and straight just like that because she seems to be turning around her hair doesn't just isn't plastered on her face so it seems like it kind of got pulled also I, I don't like what you did with the hair here some hair is longer and unless she got a really weird layered cut all of those little hairs wouldn't be sticking out that much you'd have a long stretch of straight hairs and then you'd have the like little hem of the hair the shape of the head is a little bit lacking, and that usually happens when you try to rotate a head in three-quarter view, or you add hair to the head. Usually, suddenly, the head gets concave. The head still keeps its general size. And then I'm just going to fix the ear, which is a little bit too detailed. Ears we usually throw off stage to be way less detailed. They usually sit in between the eyes and the nose. Okay, and then we usually just let them sit there. So I did all that. This was it before, and now I'm just going to blend. Block first, blend later. Write that back to me. I'm sure you all know this already. When we blend, things will make a little bit more sense. And then I'll just follow it with an eraser soft brush eraser and make sure that it still looks like feminine. It doesn't look like she's got like a five o'clock shadow or whatever it's called. Very weak shadow, very weak light source, primary light source. I wouldn't reveal this much. 
Um, I would saturate around all these areas I darkened. I probably should saturate right now. Move it into purple. Where are you, purple? See that? Like a very reddish purple. And then I move that back down. I'm trying to just balance that so it looks more like a shadow. Um, the size of her chin, if it's not, it's not big, but because her mouth is so high on her face, it looks big, so it looks very masculine. Okay. So we weakened a lot of that excessive highlight, and now what we would have to do is just get rid of this little thing you did. Just weaken... this nose outline and all that's done is just make is just flatten the nose because it's outlined it okay and then highlight and I'm gonna give the side of the nose some light and then we're gonna make an edge for the rest of the nose ah oh, jeez Photoshop Just like that. So the tip of the nose gets all that highlight from that side. So the face isn't as exposed. The eyes are asymmetrical. The eyebrows are just hovering there. Now they're not part of any biological system. They're just like stick on eyebrows. And to get rid of that effect, just blend. Blend the eyebrow into all its shadowed areas. In the shadow beneath the eyebrow, blend. Write that back. Blending this little area here. The thicker the eyebrow, the more you blend it, the more natural it looks. And the, the face feels complete when we do that. So I'm going to take questions in a second if anyone has any regarding any of the paintings we covered. Um, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Write at Estebrac in order to um, reach me or else it'll just get flooded in the chat. There's a little bit of light here. Ugh, there's a little bit of light here on the inside. A little bit of light for the upper eyelid, wherever the light reaches it. Even if she has dark eye, eye la, like uh, eyeshadow on. Oh my god! Okay. You need some of this pink right here for the inner waterline. That's a great deal of anatomy you're missing. If you like the brows I make on my 14 day challenge, makes the character look too masculine. Well, thin them out and apply the, to make them look feminine, thin them out and apply the uh, arc. By arc, for those who have like a, who are, who are not fluent in English, arc just means this little thing. That makes things look very feminine. All right, so I'm going to move her mouth a little bit down, tuck her chin a bit up. So she looks a little bit more feminine than masculine. Okay, there's a lot of work left, but it's definitely a starting point. Um, the closer you get to a hairline, the darker it gets. So I'm going to grab this. Because there's cast shadows coming off this hairline. It's not just, again, plastered on, cast a shadow. Just like that. And also, at your temple line, even for women, we have tiny little sideburn hairs just starting to get, you know, starting to grow. All baby hairs. And then finally, I'm going to spike this into some subsurface scattering. Tip of the nose, the mouth, and some of the chin. And I'm going to drown all of this in shadow. side of the face doesn't get any light because it's being blanketed by the by the hair. It might get some slight subsurface scattering light just hanging around just like that. But really, uh, I don't have enough pixels to smudge here, but hopefully it did the effect we needed. But good job capturing likeness if you used a reference. Um, I give that cheekbone back. 
the cupid's bow is way too dark again feels very masculine and in games nowadays um you, you can't afford so much androgyny uh you really can't you need you need to choose one or the other and then if for some reason you have a character that's written to be a bit more of a tomboy or be a bit more of a like a diva or something like that like we see in uh, the fifth element very specific rules and tropes that we write with okay so I'm just gonna show you the before and after and you're gonna see what I mean by that face exposure you see that so I kinda hid the face in some cool shadows just following the rules of the light I'm actually gonna smudge the hair away shouldn't be that much detail it's not that important but I will raise that strength all the way up all the way around oh I lost the tip of the nose oh, that's okay I'll bring it back oh I'm so sorry for the person who just made it <laughs> class is almost over I'm just about to take some questions Maybe you'll get a recap through the questions. <laughs> Such bad luck. I'm just going to leave the nose like this. I think it just fit, serves a purpose. I'm sorry I made her nose a little bit more of a button. Before, you just outlined the nose. You cropped off the head. You showed too much face. And, um, yes, the background is way too noisy. I was going to comment on the background. Uh, grayscale it and just decrease that excessive texture. Why is the texture more important in the background than the texture on her armor, which is her? The story is on her. Are we taking a picture of the background? Is, is does the, did the background want a photo shoot? Did that wall, is it sentient? Can it talk? Did it hire a photographer? No. Take it easy with giving the background the focal point with its excessive micro texture. It's, it's, it's very immature choice. Okay. So, Mr. Rack, you got me into drawing again. Oh, I'm so happy that, you know, you got back into it. It's just the best. You can't not draw, you know. Even people, I think, who don't draw um, really want to. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the armor should be a little bit more reflective. Careful not to make it as reflective as it would be because your focal point um, is, uh, is 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 the, is a danger. <laughs> Let me find some at Mr. Rax. Um Yes, the background texture is distracting. Uh, how would you organize your workflow? I have difficulties with this. Um, think large to small, geometric to organic. Uh, sketch your face first. Decide on the focal point. How much of the character do you want in your painting? Um, how much of the background do you want? Negative versus positive space. Then move on to sketching out your character. You can even sketch out the geometry is where you're going to have a lot of light. Then move into some grayscale if you'd like. If you want to go straight into color raw, that's fine. Um, I'll leave detail to the end. Make sure you have a lot of references. Uh, organize and plan the painting before you even start it with thumbnails. That, that's a good way to, to decide on negative and positive space. White on black. Um, black on white, sorry. Uh, those are ways to organize your workflow. The, the better you get, the more organized your workflow. Uh, write that back to me. That's because you understand that your geometries have to be rushed and your details have to be delayed. So automatically, in understanding the fundamental, you get organized. Um, also, painting every day makes you more efficient. Hey, I, sh I, sh I usually you know thrive when I use this brush. So your workflow gets faster. So workflow is in the speed at which you work and how organized and efficient you are. How much time do you dilly-dally around a nose before you finally get a nose? Um, so that's because you have really bad geometry language. Um, so the better you get, the better your workflow. It's not, you can't be good with bad workflow. You can't be a professional with bad workflow. You, 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 it's hand in hand. So the fundamentals work will guide you. The workflow isn't a fundamental by itself. It's a result. Good workflow is a result of solid fundamentals. Write that back. I'm sorry, I'm making you write everything back to me today. Um... Let me see if I have any more questions. No. <clears throat> yes, she's a drag queen. Hair looks detailed. 
Um. <laughs> I'm not intentionally screaming at the mic. Her mouth is a little big. It's okay. I don't want to change her too much. I don't want to make her look like a Barbie doll. Um, some women's mouths are pretty wide. Mine is annoyingly small. <laughs> I wish my mouth was a little bigger. Um, I think the wall adds a lot. It has the rustic medieval feeling, but maybe not the detail of it. The background should not be doing all the medieval for you. I can't. Is this a sentient background? Um, is, does it have a story arc? All of us, is it a protagonist? Is it just a what background walking around through, mi for, through middle earth? If this background should not be the only thing pushing the medieval feel. So no, it's the medieval rustic. This should not be made. Medieval rustic can be made by the moss or dirt or whatever on her armor. The scratches on her armor, her short haircut, maybe some soot on her face. People didn't use to bathe like we do. Their hygiene was crap. Um, maybe some, I don't know, plague starting on her chin. She has, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yes, her far eye is misaligned. I tried to push it down a little bit, but I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to do too much. <clears throat> yes, the better you get, the more organized your workflow automatically gets. Um, how would you fix the background? Uh, you can desaturate it, select only the background and blur it a little bit. You can use the palette knife feature. So you could be doing all of this. I mean, if the background and you hopefully in your PSD, it's se separated. Uh, so you can blur slightly, blur, Gaussian blur. All right, and then you can filter artistic and then where are you, palette knife. You can just decrease it just a little bit. So you see, you still get the same thing, but look at that intensive detail. All right, so yeah, it's a little something like this. And then you desaturate. Nice and out of the way. All right, that's what the background should be doing. Opposite to that, you should be bringing all the detail out here. Um, all the highlights and the crazy business out here. The highlights for the armor, you should focus it all back on her. Of course, don't let it be too bright. She is the focal point. Um, and stuff like that. Okay, before, after. Sorry that you lost some of the face for, because of the paint over it. Um, so that's it for today. For those who are curious about the program I used to help with today's critique, it's Portrait Studio. We're going to be seeing a lot of this as we go. I've been waiting for it to be perfected. Portrait Studio update is out, but only half of it. The expressions, the neck rig, the uh, posable figure, and much more models, creepy old goblins and stuff like that. Hopefully some of my models that I sculpt for you guys will be in there as well. Um, I'm looking forward to the posable figure though. That's going to be amazing, the little mannequin. Uh, I think that's going to be really fun. Uh, expressions will be back, and then we'll be able to change the uh, fuzziness on the shadows. You'll be able to ch have more fuzzy shadows. Not every shadow has to be sharp. Um, and uh, I think that's it. I think that's uh, what's going to be uh, coming back uh, for the part two. So the reason why I did it is because I didn't want to make you guys wait like another week. I promised you guys it would be out. I kept, you know, breaking my promise because something kept coming up. And even in the update, we had an issue with the update with the launcher and um, the, uh, the patcher. So I was just like, oh my lord, everything is just standing in the way of our of our update. Um, so for those who want to join, go to isterback.com and um, go to la, 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 the little Google Plus icon here and join the community and make sure you follow the rules. There is a challenge submission out, I mean, uh, announcement for the challenge, for the monthly challenge out right now. It's a holiday, busy fantasy town, environment design. Take a look at that. And subscribe on YouTube, like, and all that business. <laughs> um, and that's it for today. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a great day, guys. Bye.